it's back too late is, like how lazy it is. Okay, for me, for me, <laughs> <laughs> for me, texting back late, it has to be like about five to ten minutes. Yeah, I agree with that one. I I I agree, but I can have my own fault in this. I text back pretty late, like two hours is late, like way late. And I know people don't text back for like a day, but I agree, five to ten minutes is like good. It's a good, it's cute, but I can't really. All right, know. for me as a guy, I think that texting back late, depending on how long it is, because some guys like me, I feel like if you text back, like as soon as you get the text, it makes you seem kind of desperate. I think you should wait at least like. <laughs> I think you should wait at least like two to three minutes before you text back. So depends on what you're saying when you say texting back late. Mm, I guess when I'm saying texting back late, it's like you got people like me because I'm guilty of it all the time. People call me light skin because I text back like late, or I just don't text back at all, or I have. My read receipts on, and, and I read it, and they be like, "So you don't text me back?" And I'm like, "Oh, my bad." But I mean, it's a lot that goes into that. But the next don't is being paused on Facetime. Oh I have a big concern with this. <laughs> <laughs> being paused on Facetime is like it's like a slap in the face because I'm on Facetime to see your face and interact with you at the same time. Not going on pause for you to check Twitter, text somebody back, or be on Instagram, or whatever you're going to do. Right, Ty, I feel you on that one. And another disrespectful thing, not only being paused on FaceTime, but when they have you on the camera, but they're looking at the but ceiling. The, yes! The ceiling. Oh, like, that is I such that. a pet peeve. Now, it's called, you know, FaceTime, so I expect to see your face. Yeah. You want to put your face in FaceTime, and you should have just called me mobily and kept it at that. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, I agree with that topic right there, because being paused and being ignored on FaceTime. The whole point of FaceTime is so you can interact with each other and be able to see each other's face. If you weren't going to, if you weren't going to want weren't going to interact with each other, what was your point of even trying to FaceTime with someone when you could just call them at a regular way and just talk? Can I just say what my pet peeve is? Good. This is with FaceTime. My pet peeve is how people be on a camera like this. And you can't kind of like see their face, right? Like, just see their eyes, or just see like their face. I'm just like, like, bottom part. I'm just like, can I at least say, like, see you? Like, like your whole face. Like, your whole face. I don't want to see your comforter. I don't want to see your feet. I don't want to see your, your ceiling. I don't want to see your bookcase. I don't want to see the, the posters on your. I don't, I just want to see you. Like, you. It's just the, Biggest pet peeve in mind, or how they have you on mute. Like I hate Pause. that. I don't know because if, if I get on mute, yeah. Like someone put me put me on mute once. I'm just talking, like pouring out my feelings. I think it was one day I was upset, and all of a sudden I just hear, just just I see nothing. Like I'm just like, what, are you even listening? <laughs> like just the whole conversation. Just for nothing, and that irritates me too. That that irritates me. You still stay on phone because I want to. See, I I have patience with people. I don't. Mm -hmm. I just I just no. <laughs> I I just lose patience like that now. It's unfortunate, but that's just mute button. No go. No go. So. The next thing we got is entertaining other people while in a relationship. So does any like individually y'all can speak on this topic? All right, so with that, I say you shouldn't do it because uh, if you're in a relationship, uh, you should be entertaining your partner and not interacting with other people. It depends on the level that you're entertaining them as. You should entertain them as friends, but not too close because it's a point where it becomes too personal that it may interfere with your relationship. Mm, that was big. I most definitely got something on that because, like, it was this relationship that I had with this boy. We're not going to say names because, you know, it's too much. <laughs> code names, code don't, names. Don't nobody need to know about his world. <laughs> so, anyway, so I had a, a relationship or whatever, and we was real like we was kicking it for a minute, you know. And, you know, boys going to tell you what they're going to tell you. Girls going to tell you what they're going to tell you. Oh, yeah. So um, in the midst of going out with this boy, it happened to be one of my friends. 
who started talking to the boy that I was talking to. And um, I felt like he gave her more power than he should have. Like, that's my friend. You should be texting my boyfriend anyway. But the fact is that even that you texted him and the, time, the point that he gave you the time of the day to even make you feel like he was something more than what you are, mm. it's, just, it's just a slap in the face and it's real disrespectful, I feel, when you entertain, when like, people entertain other people knowing that they're in a relationship. Like, what was the point of getting in the relationship if you were just going to entertain others and make them feel like they had a place or yeah. that they could trump you? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, but, any of y'all got any stories on this? <laughs> I mean, I agree with you, honestly. I, I just, I'm trying to think. I don't think there's not one time that my ex boyfriend stunted on me. You know, no, seriously, it felt like, no, I'm serious. It, it felt like you. Like, he's entertaining somebody else and not me. Like, you're on FaceTime me, you're calling me, but yet you're you're somewhere else entertaining somebody, somebody else. Because this person that he was entertaining was in Wisconsin, and we in Chicago, so I don't see the difference of, you know, how are you going to entertain somebody? Like, do I have to make a road trip to come and talk to her? Like, uh, just... So, it's... It's just, I, I hated the fact that he did that. And it's just the fact that he said, don't worry about it. The words, don't worry about it, it's kind of just, uh. Um, how many of you all have um, ever been in a relationship before and you lied about something to make yourself seem cooler? <laughs> <laughs> Guilty. I think everybody got to put their hand up on that one. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 what's y'all story about? That. <laughs> I lied saying that I met President Obama. <laughs> Why you lied saying you met President Obama to all people? Because he's President Obama. He's President Obama. <laughs> and this is like the first time I met this person. I was just like, hey, I met Obama. Yeah, I'm like, I, I was cool with Malia too. It's just. I lied so bad. So I was like, just for you to start a conversation, you exactly. say, I met Obama. Yeah. Um, hey, I met Obama. Want to be friends? <laughs> I mean, it was this one time. I didn't lie um, to make myself seem cooler. But the person who I was talking to at the time lied. Um, you know, he tried to make it seem like he was um, in the streets a lot. You know, he had lied about getting shot. He got okay. shot, but let me tell you, the thing was, he shot himself. <laughs> he tried to make it seem like, oh, one of the guys was into it with another guy, man. And, you know, we was out here, and I got shot. The whole time he got shot, at a, he shot himself at a prom center in his foot. <laughs> <laughs> so. Disrespect. <laughs> Looks like he had a bloody good time, right? <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> As far as discouraging your partner, as far as like maybe putting them down or like killing their dreams or something, would anybody have any experience with that? I told my boyfriend ex that he, he wasn't, I don't think being a doctor is kind of realistic. He wants to be a doctor. And I was just like, I like I said I was like I was just like uh you know a lot of people want to be doctors right and you know a lot of people want to go to school and then I just <laughs> like the look on his face was just like like someone telling a child that Santa doesn't exist like that's just that's the look that he had on his face <laughs> it was terrible it's terrible so I mean I feel that should be a don't because me personally. In a relationship, I don't feel like I could be with someone who is going to bring down my dreams for the future because yeah. in a relationship, you want to be with someone who's going to support you and wants to help you achieve your goals for the future and not that's going to bring you down because that's not someone you want to be surrounded by. Right. Well, I mean, I don't discourage my partner, but I feel like I'm going to do everything in my power to get you on the right track. But if you detour from that, mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to cut you off. Like I don't have past relationships before where I don't talk to somebody who's 
like grown, you know, still living in their mom house. I'm not knocking that, you know, but they it seemed like they just wanted to live with their mama forever, and you know, I, I can't deal with that. And so, I mean, I wasn't really discouraging him, but it's like at that point, that's when you just gotta, you know, stop talking okay. to a person who really don't see a future in themselves. I feel what you're saying, but like, do y'all ever feel like it's a connection between discouraging and um more so like leading like leading somebody up with you like wanting them to be on the same level as you as far as goals and education and things like that mm, that's a deep question yeah because <laughs> like let me put it like this so girls if a guy come up to you and he not necessarily on the level that you want but you want to bring him up to that level but he just ain't on that are you gonna stay or are you gonna leave and then boys vice versa that's a good question. I, you know, I want him to be successful in life. I want anybody in this world nowadays to be successful, to be happy. But if he, you know, wants to be all childish and act like he's still like in preschool and diapers, then that's not going to happen. But I'm, but if you're with me, you have to be like, you have to have a goal. You have to have. You have to have like a vision. It can't be tunnel vision all the time, you know. Right. And I, I feel like there's boys out there who have that that vision, that drive to keep going. Honestly, I agree with that because it's like what basically what both of them were saying. It it, it has a lot to do with time because. You don't want to just introduce someone into your family and welcome them to everybody that you know, and then like you're not gonna be with them for that long, and then people are just looking at you like, "Wow, you're like stupid." I mean, you just <laughs> you just got with them. Now y'all done. It's only been like a week, so you should wait at least like till you're like you're two months or three months into it before you introduce them to your family because. Personally, you don't want to be sitting around looking stupid because you just got with them and then. You let them see your family and meet them, and then they're just automatically out of your life and your family. You just showed them this person, and now uh, they don't know them anymore. Mm. I feel what you're saying. I'm a mess with this. Yeah. Especially because, like, I feel the same kind of way because I'm the youngest out of all my four sisters. So it's kind of, like, hard to bring a boy around my dad more so than my mom. Oh, yeah. Because my dad be, like, on the fence, like, who is this? Who am I doing? Like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so he, just, he is more so the person that will, like, yeah, yeah. go crazy because I'm the youngest. But over all of that, like, as far as attraction to people, as far as it could be, like, face, they smart, they whatever, like, what do you find attractive in a person? Um, I, I think just humility, you know, you have to sympathize with other humans. Have you know, feel, have sympathy, you know, um, don't be kind of trash talk, you know, um, kind, sweet, treat me like I'm, you know, like, treat me like I'm your mother, but not, like, in a weird way, <laughs> you know, but the one that kind of turns me off is, like, attitude, you know, do you have the more power in our relationship? Like the being the pants in the family, you know? I don't like that. Um, what do I find attractive? Um, to be honest, when I see a person, I don't automatically see their personality. So something has to attract them to me. So it's either they face or how they dress, but nine times out of 10 is they face. So once I see their face and I feel like, you know, they got some type of potential, I only want to, you know, try to get to know them. And to be honest, what I find attractive is somebody who knows how to, like, you know, treat treat a woman. And it's not always about the, you know, materialistic things, but it's like to get them to get to know them on that deep type level. Too. Yeah, I agree with all that, but uh, we're running out of time here, so we should go into some of the duels. So the most important duel to me, I say, uh, is communication in the relationship because. If there's no communication going on, then there's basically no relationship because, like we were saying from the beginning, there's you don't know what each other want, and there's no point of this 
even starting because there's no communication whatsoever, so you don't know what to expect from each other. I feel you. Um, a do for me is maybe like support and understanding people's wishes. So, I mean. I feel like another do is to make sure you guys see each other. Like, I know people always say long distance relationships usually work. But in my opinion, I don't think so unless you constantly seeing each other, meaning uh, FaceTime, Skype, something like that. Or if you guys live down the street from each other, at least see each other at least twice a week. It depends on how you both feel about each other, but I feel like you have to actually be in that person's presence. And to the podcast listeners, that is the one and only Kayla Simone that just hopped on. You know, yes, yeah, Special K. Special K, giving her words of wisdom about relationships. I'm going to let you guys know. It's a Nick Finesse on the board. I'm going to give it back to the group. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anybody else like main thing they think of in a relationship? The first, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Love. Yeah. I think just love, just the emotion, the feeling of butterflies, and the feeling of having a person in your mind back to back twenty four seven. But I haven't had that in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another one would be friendship. Uh. I know friendship, it's not, it's kind of like putting them down, but you got to be friends before you can become lovers because you need to know each other on a more intimate <laughs> level before you start to say that you truly love them because you have to really know something about that person and be able to communicate with them on a friendly level before you get into that love stage. Mm -hmm. So we talking about that. <laughs> I, I don't know how to <laughs> get off, really pick up from that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's 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 the question I wanted to say. Like, do we even know what love is? I mean, we see it on TV, we see it on social media, but like, do we really know what like love is? Like, I mean, the kind of love that like it's like a bus hits you at twenty two hundred miles per hour type love. <laughs> I don't know if that's about what love is. Because like honestly, I don't think that it comes with I don't think it comes with age. I think it comes more so with experience. And I'm saying that because it take I mean of course it's gonna take a few heartbreaks for you to get to where you wanna be. But I feel like love is not only about love, it's about understanding your partner and making compromises and uh, like just being able to bond with that person and not not wanting to go out and cheat on them or not wanting to, like, you really got to be with that person. You really got to be, like, eye to eye with it. Like, with your mind, you could say something. And it's like, you know, like, they y'all could talk about anything. So, of course, there's a friendship that come along with it. But I feel like it's also other things as well that you need to come in with that person. Right. I feel like uh, love, personally, uh, there's a lot of things that come with love. Like, there's a big string that goes with love. There's different characteristics and traits that goes into something before you can say that you're honestly in love. And at the ages that we are in, I don't think any of us have experienced true love yet. Because uh, like she said, it takes time and age does play a big part into it because it takes a while before you can honestly say that you're in love. And what she was saying, there's a lot of ties into friendship and your life. There's different roles that play into love, so that's it. <laughs> okay, so I got a question for you guys. Do you believe in love at first sight? Because I know millions and millions of people that believe it, and I know older folks, like 40-year-old men that know it. So like, they, I, I was having this conversation with my boss the other day. He's just like, yeah, I believe in it. Uh, I love women from the first time I see them, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Okay, does everybody go with that or no? No. No. Because I could see a boy that, because I'm not really obsessed with chocolate boys. I could see a boy that's chocolate and be like, oh, he found it. No. Oh, I can't just see it in no person's face and be like, that's the one. I'm going to marry him. I know. I can't see that for me. Honestly, love at first sight, I see, like, you feel it, but honestly, I don't believe in it either because when I see them, I, I might say that maybe I'm in love, but. Uh, love, that's personally, like we were saying, it takes a while. And I don't think that just by seeing someone, you can say, oh, yeah, I'm going to be in love with them. Because there's a lot of things, and you never know what could happen in the future and how things might turn out. I mean, but it's a different, what type of love are y'all talking about? Like, 
I love you or I'm in love with you. Like those are two Both. Are totally two different things. I love you and I'm in love with you. Right, I feel you because you can have love for somebody but you don't have to love them. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't really believe in love at first sight. I don't even think there's like a such thing. Like I applaud the people who actually have love at first sight, but I mean, everything is not a Cinderella story. Every story, love is not a Sleeping Beauty story. There's no such thing as a happily ever after to me sometimes. Whoa. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, but I don't know. It's just... It's I don't I don't believe it anymore. Okay, so that was Tay Desto, Kayla Simone, yeah. aka Special K, Anne Marie, Anne Marie, and your boy Nick. And we were just coming in with you for the do's and don'ts of relationship, and we got a little off, but we hope you enjoyed it and tune back with us on Thursday. Thank you guys again for joining me for another video. Please subscribe and join the